I really want to go see the world. I want to go swim with whale sharks. I want to go stand on the rim of an active volcano and watch it spew lava at night. I want to go spear fishing for dinner. I want to be in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on a crystal clear night and see stars in 360 degrees. I mean, you name it, throw a dart at a map. I want to go see it. And going and seeing the world on a boat that I built, I think that that would be pretty amazing. And a boat that I built with my great grandfather's grandfather's hand tools. And these oak trees that I'm gonna cut down are trees that my great grandfather would have probably sat under when he was a kid tending the cows. To immortalize them into this boat and give them another 100 plus years of life and take them on a world tour, it's, it's just so cool and something that I want to make happen and I've dreamt about it for a long time and just kind of gotten to the point where the cards have fallen in place, the stars have aligned and I'm, I'm ready to try. We'll see what happens. Welcome back to the Arabella Boathouse. Six years ago, this boat building project got underway and though not much has changed about Steve's dream of building it over the last 200 episodes, plenty has changed from the beginning which is true for any good story worth telling and any adventure worth undertaking. Today's episode will take a pause from the boat building to give a moment to reflect on all those changes, to see how far this project has come, and to prepare for the final chapters of building Arabella. Rest assured, Anne and Steve have been working away in the boathouse and will have a regular episode for you next week. And if you're watching this video on Friday, the day it comes out, we're hosting a live event at 5 p.m. Eastern time here in the U.S., all are invited to join us online today, and the link for that is in the description below. As always, thank you for being such a positive and supportive community. Your suggestions, your contributions, your engagement with this project over the years is what keeps it all going. And we all hope you'll be able to enjoy it along with us for the next 200 episodes and beyond. Thank you. It's been about six years, believe it or not, since we cut down the first tree and started milling lumber and stacking it here in this woodshed in preparation for building Arabella. So this pine here is air dried for six years now and will become the decking this summer, which is gonna be an exciting stage to get to. But believe it or not, this is the 200th episode. So in the six years, we started as a team of two, and now we're about to be a team of four, which is really exciting. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, but things have grown and changed a lot, and we've created, like I said, this is our 200th episode. That doesn't include the 18 lives that are out there, 15 of which are for patrons. So if you are a member at $5 or more a month, you get access to the monthly live events those get archived. There's a few more lives that are from boat shows and that kind of thing. There's like 30 bonus videos. It's crazy. Uh, I can't believe that we've been sharing the journey of Arabella and sharing our lives and what this whole process has been for that amount of time. Speaking of that amount of time, uh, it's been, what is it, 35 and a half million views, which is bonkers. And that equates to 6.9 million watch hours. 6.9 million watch hours. That's how much time people have spent uh, watching us cut trees, mill lumber, pour ballast keels, and start to build Arabella. So why would someone with a full-time job, salaried, benefited, 401k, paid vacations, I came and went pretty much as I pleased. I was the head route setter for a pretty big climbing gym. Master's degree in education, taught for a number of years. Uh, why would I cash in my 401k, quit my job, and put it all out on the line to, to build a big wooden boat? You know, the real beginning of that was when I was a little kid and we would vacation up in Maine. 
and I would see these uh, wooden boats sail by. And uh, I thought it was amazing that you know those boats could then theoretically go anywhere in the world that they wanted to go that was blue. And I thought that was pretty neat. And I also had an appreciation that somebody cut down the trees and milled the lumber and had the time and the skills uh, to build a vessel like this and have it be curved and watertight when the wood swells. And I always thought that was really fascinating as a kid. And I think it planted a, a bit of a seed in my brain that, you know, someday it would be really cool to cut down some trees and mill lumber and build a boat. But it was never more than that. Like someday it could be cool to live on Mars, you know, it was just really, really out there. And then in fast forward, 2011, I was out on vacation in Cape Cod, we had a rainy day, I went to a used bookstore and picked up a book, 50 Wooden Boat Plans. So it was really nice to, to find this boat building and to dive more into the technical side of it and read and research on nights and weekends and have something to kind of chew on during the day and, and think about and figure out. And, uh, and I just kept chewing on it. And then it was 2015 and I turned 30 years old and I sat down and really thought about, you know, what I was doing with my life and if I was on track to do what I wanted to do. And I've always wanted to travel and explore. I've always been hungry for the unknown. And I realized that you know, I wasn't really on that track. I had the same job for six years and progressed about as high as I was going to in that. And I decided that it wasn't a someday, that it was a now. And that is when I also found YouTube and people sailing their fiberglass yachts around the world, namely Delos and the Vagabond, who are kind of the OGs of that. And I realized what Patreon was and merchandise sales and how they were sharing their lives and their experiences and what they were doing. And people were helping to contribute and make those videos and keep that, uh, to keep that coming. And I thought, you know, maybe, maybe, people would be willing to, to follow the journey of building a boat and then going and voyaging on it. And I asked Alex if he thought he could make some videos and would be interested in that. And he said that he was, and at that point it was, it was game on and I haven't stopped since. So there's the lumber to build the boat and then there's the lumber to build the infrastructure to build the boat. Uh, so we have the boathouse, We've got the shed that houses the thickness planer. Um, we've got all of the lumber here that we need. Uh, but there's the molds that we had to make, the lofting floor, tons of bracing and patterns and staging. There's the second floor in the boathouse. And when you're buying lumber, you can specify that you want nice clear boards. And when you get a thousand board feet of lumber, it's a thousand usable board feet of lumber. When you're cutting down trees and milling like we are, you get all of the great lumber and you get all of the junk lumber. So we really had to mill three or four times what you would think you would need just because a lot of it ends up being unusable for knots and defects and that kind of thing. Uh, so we had, to, we had to do a lot of milling and this was a gigantic pile of lumber at one point that was all oak and now all that oak is inside the boat and fastened to Arabella or up the smoke because uh, it heated the house or the steam box. <laughs> we knew that building the boat, especially while making videos, was going to take a significant amount of time and uh, it was absolutely going to take years. And from the get-go we told people 2 to 10 and we are still on track to come in under 10. So we are on time. Uh, the joys of having a big time window. But we knew that having the structure to protect the boat and the equipment and to be able to work in the inclement weather, which we have quite frequently here in New England, uh, we decided that you know the building was, was paramount. And I did a lot of planning with how the boat and everything would fit in here. And I don't know if you remember, but none of this second floor was here. This whole structure was completely open and we had a huge lofting floor here that went from the wall basically right up to where the boat is now. And that is where we drew the boat out full size and was really the, the first process of actual boat building uh, was the lofting of the boat. And that let us pick up the shape for our ballast keel and the center line structure and all of the molds and got us on our way towards actually building a boat.
I guess so many of you remember the lofting floor, and I'm sure all of you remember this one, and this is where we poured the ballast keel. Uh, and if you want to go from not many YouTube subscribers to quite a few YouTube subscribers, apparently pouring a big ballast keel is a good way to do it. Uh, so we poured the ballast keel and that video went bonkers on YouTube. There's an incredible amount of comments. People had a lot of things to say. Uh, but that's what really launched the channel, and with that, we got enough viewers and we got enough patrons, thank you again, patrons, uh, that Alex was able to quit his job at the coffee shop and was able to be compensated through Acorn de Arabella for his time video editing uh, and working behind the scenes on the, the camera work and the computer side of things. And it was going to take a little bit longer and a little more growth and actually another employee before I was able to quit my jobs and come work for Acorn de Arabella full time. Uh, but we did get there and at, uh, it was about a year after Alex. The project progressed and the support grew pretty quickly with Alex being full time and us getting the keel pour done, putting the backbone assembly up and standing up the molds. And it was about that time we realized that we drastically underestimated the amount of wood that we were going to need for this endeavor. Uh, and if you look around, there's a lot of wood. Everything is wood. Uh, so we did another really big round of logging. Nothing like strapping a $500 camera to the top of a tree. And Keeping the fingers crossed. Uh, and at that point, I had just managed to quit my full-time job and pick up a part-time job doing tree work. Uh, so that got us a couple extra logs from the tree jobs, and it gave me some more flexibility to handle that next round of sawmilling. And when we were getting ready to do that round, we knew that we needed to find some wood for the mast. And we asked the family if we were able and willing to cut down one of my great-grandfather's trees that he planted in the front yard to use as the mast. And we asked mom, and she said yes. And we asked grandpa, and he says, you got to ask grandma. And we asked grandma, and she said, you know, he would not be happy about his tree being cut down, but he would be happy about his tree being cut down for this purpose. Uh, so we borrowed Tom's tree equipment. It was great that I was working with them at the time and climbed that spruce tree and cut the top off and dropped that and milled it up when we had the sawmill and that's uh, ready to become Arabella's main mast. So thank you, great grandpa. You had no idea when you were a little kid and you planted that tree that that's what would happen with it, but I'm thankful you planted it. And this is where the tree stood. It was taller than these ones around it. And we threaded the needle between the spruce trees and the uh, crab apple tree there. And that's where I ended up dropping the trunk. first big work crew was steam bending these frames. Uh, definitely was nice having a lot of hands for that, so thank you to everyone who's come and helped us steam bend these big old oak frames in here. Once we got the frames in, Alex and I really realized that we we're kind of at a crossroads in the project, and we could continue just the two of us, or we could try to bring on some extra help. And we decided that bringing on the extra help would be prudent and that would alleviate Alex from having to do the video editing and he could focus more on the filming. And we hoped that by bringing on a video editor and producing weekly content instead of just two videos a month, that would allow me to quit my part-time job and come full-time with Aocorn to Arabella as well. So believe it or not, we placed a job advertisement on Indeed and uh, we got a bunch of applicants and we really, really liked Ben Fundus and we ended up hiring him. He came on at a Peasley rate. I can't believe he uh, took so little pay in the beginning, but we, uh, we told him that if we grew that he would grow with us and here we are th almost three years later and uh, we couldn't be happier to have him on the team. Well. So this is my studio, my office that I've been working out of uh, here in Newburyport, Massachusetts since uh, early last summer. And before that, in 2019, when I started on the project, 
Uh, I was working out of an unfinished basement in upstate New York, uh, living in a house with my wife and my four-year-old son. It's been an incredible journey from my perspective, too, going through this project. The fun part has been actually trying to find a story within something that may take it may take a month and a half. It may take two months and you may be seeing a fiberglass fridge. You may feel like it's day in and day out. But that's what I love about this project too. It, it, week to week, the work goes on. It has to be done and it will get done. I have believed from the very beginning when I first met Steve and Alex that this boat was going to make it in the water. Um, and I only believe that more now. So I'd like to thank everybody that watches the show, that, that comments on the show, that supports the show in all the ways that you do, uh, that you, you basically make it an opportunity of a lifetime for me. Uh, and it's, it's not, there's not too many people that can say that they're working their dream job. And I really feel that I am. Uh, so thank you again. And another one of the joys is the people that I get to work with. Uh, getting to know Steve, getting to know Alex, and getting to know Anne has been a real joy. And uh, they work really, really, really hard to bring you everything that you see each week. And uh, now I would like to cut to Anne and uh, let her introduce herself a little bit more to you and uh, talk about that. In 2017, I was associate editor at Wooden Boat Magazine had about seven years of living aboard under my belt. And I really, um, I was tired. I had been at the wooden boat show all day and I came back to the boat I was staying aboard, Fleckeroy, and there was Steve and Alex sitting in the cockpit. And we've been friends ever since. I used to stop by when I came through town, when I was on road trips and I would, um, I would take pictures for Wooden Boat for the, you know, for their Instagram and Facebook, and it felt really good to help, you know, promote what they were doing here. There were a lot of people who I would speak with who would say, "Well, we'll see when they got a boat-shaped thing, what's going to happen," and um, I'll believe it when they launch and things like that. And I'll tell you what, I, um, I didn't care about that. I've always been a supporter no matter how far this was going to go but in 2020 after I left Wooden Boat I was adrift for a little while and Steve and Alex caught wind of it and scooped me up so in November 2020 I, I started working in the background here. I love what I do a bit of it is finish work a bit of it is you know I answer technical questions in the comments and I do a lot of communications here and I love it. I love bringing people inside this project and being a part of that and I think about that every time I'm behind the camera is that I'm bringing you with me and I hope that the experience that I learned here, I hope that I can convey a bit of that to both Steve and everybody else. and. I love the community that we've cultivated and you're a part of it. Thank you so much for being here every Friday and happy 200th episode to you. And thanks for watching. As we began the planking process, little did we know that life was gonna have some real big curveballs for us real quick. Uh, so we started planking in the oak and we had our planking party because planking like steam bending frames is something we're having many hands makes lighter work and the cedar planking did not go well and I'm sure you remember that debacle of us putting planks on and taking planks off and so that was our first curveball. Our second curveball was Alex met a lovely woman and fell in love and she was planning a four month road trip and desperately wanted him to go with her and uh, can't blame him for wanting to go. So that was curveball number two. And curveball number three was the pandemic uh, and all of those coalesced together. Uh, thankfully, we had a local chap named Aaron and he didn't have employment for the summer due to the pandemic. 
So Aaron and I hunkered down here in the boathouse, ripped off the cedar planks, and started marching oak planks up the boat for the summer. And it was really great to have a, a help in hand, and Aaron, other than Ben, was the, the first person who was paid to be here on the project for a significant amount of time, other than Alex and I. Planking Arabella was definitely the, the longest and hardest part of building the boat for us by far. And when we got the first part of the planking done, we got stalled for the winter. And when we went to finish it up this past summer, Alex and I realized that having a skilled, competent hand here to help us out would be, would expedite the process greatly. So we asked around, and thanks to a tip from our friend Andrew Guest, who's restoring Rosalind down in Mystic, uh, he introduced us to Carolyn Corbin, uh, who is a talented young boatwright. And Carolyn came, we instantly hit it off, and she worked with us with wrapping up the last bit of the planking. It looks pretty good. It is not a piano. And it worked out timing-wise really, really well, because we brought Carolyn on, and shortly after that, uh, Alex's dad had some health complications in France, and he and Kira decided to buy a house and get his dad over here so they could take care of him. And that meant that Carolyn and I could continue chugging along and we didn't have to scramble to find someone to help out. She is the, the most skilled, competent hand really that we've had come and work on the boat. And having someone here that knows exactly what they need to do and how it should be done. And I can just say, Carolyn, can you go fit blah? And the answer would be yes, and she could go do it. Uh, and that made a really big difference. Uh, not to mention that she's very upbeat and great energy and just a lot of fun to work with. And she left some pretty indelible marks on Arabella, not only helping with the planking and some work in the interior, but she was the, uh, the author of Acorn to Arabella's Bilge Dragon uh, that lives in the Lazarette. So thank you so much to Carolyn. And Carolyn's help uh, really inspired us to uh, dig deep and hire a full-time hand to help us finish up Arabella. Uh, so KP starts in a few weeks and we're really excited for that. And if you are watching this in real time on Friday, join us tonight for the live and you'll get to meet KP in person. They're coming down for the live event. They'll be here for the open house today. Uh, and they will be here full-time starting the beginning of March through launch. And uh, we can't wait to have KP and Seeing the difference that Carolyn made definitely made it a financially tricky decision, but uh, for the build, great decision to bring on another skilled hand. I love adventure. I love casting off into the unknown. It's the reason I like climbing big walls and paddling whitewater rivers and playing around in the mountains. Acorn to Arabella, both building the boat and the YouTube channel, is kind of the biggest uh, huck off the metaphorical cliff that I've ever done in my life. And uh, I couldn't be more happy or amazed or surprised with how everything has turned out. It was one of those things where we had no idea where the journey was gonna go. You know, if we were going to see through it to the end, if we were going to, you know, if YouTube was going to take off, if anyone would even care. We had, we had no idea, uh, but we knew, we knew where to begin. And it's been a really, really amazing journey. When we started, you know, we had nothing to show for any of this other than some bravado and a promise. Uh, we talked to, you know, a lot of folks and everyone had concerns, you know, rightfully so. This is a real big undertaking. Are you going to be the same person in five or ten years that you are now? Are you going to want the same thing? What about significant other family members, kids, all that jazz? And there was a core group of people that we talked to who didn't care any about any of that. Uh, and they were all folks that were in their, I would say, late 60s into their 80s. And every single one of them in that age group just got like really uncomfortably vehement about doing it and doing it now. And like these little old ladies, you know, like literally poking me in my chest saying, you know, do it, do it now. And there's time for partners, there's time for kids. Maybe you won't even want them or have them, but go do this. You won't regret it. Do it while you're young. Do it while you have the energy. Do it while you don't have the commitments holding you down. And I'm really glad that I talked to those people because there were so many people who had 
lots of questions, and like I said, rightfully so. And it was really great to hear from some folks who, who probably understand time and a lifespan and what that means and what that's worth and what you're going to look back on. I mean, they understand that better than I think any of us can possibly imagine uh, at a younger age. So to hear them say, just, you know, swing for the fences and go for it was great. And it turns out it was solid advice. And it turns out that the folks who were saying, you know, things may change and you may want different things, they were right as well. Uh, and that ended up being the case for Alex. You know, his dad needs some care. He met an amazing woman. They've talked about maybe starting a family and finding their way to the water a little different way. Um, so Alex's path, you know, joined mine with Acorn Arabella and has moved on to other things. And I'm still here. Uh, so that is definitely one of the dicey roll with a really long-term project like this. And I got to say that building the boat has been an amazing sense of accomplishment, you know, to come out here and see what we've created day after day and week after week and year after year. Uh, but really one of the things that I never imagined and that means the most is hearing from folks who have been inspired or helped in some way, shape or form by the project. And I really, really love hearing from folks that, you know, say things like, I don't know, you got me to go do blah, whatever that is, you know, install a cabinet, fix a keel on a boat, trade in their rock crawler and work on a cheval. There's, we get stories every week um, and it's really amazing. And there are definitely hard days of slow progress and sharing things on YouTube and commenters aren't always the nicest. Uh, but that core group that we have that's here every Friday morning or Saturday, whenever you watch, um, that is here following along on this journey and is getting, you know, some sort of enjoyment or inspiration or knowledge or whatever from it. Uh, and we really, really, we really love that. That really what makes the, the hard days worth it and keeps us psyched to keep sharing the project and keep going and can't wait till the build's done and we're voyaging around in remote places of the world and hopefully you'll follow us through that journey as well. So leave a comment below, let us know what it is that you get out of the channel and what you're hoping to see in the next few years as we hit the water and go adventure. And thank you so much to our patrons and anyone else who has supported. We definitely could not be producing these weekly videos without you. So thank you very much. It's an honor to, uh, to be able to do this and to share it with you all. And we'll see you here every Friday. Yeah. You ready to go sailing? You want us to hurry up and finish the boat? You ready for some adventures? What do you think? Yeah, you're not sure? I think it'll be fun. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> He's a character, that's for sure. <laughs>